Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, is she a professional dater? Well, I've got an email here from a guy who met a gal online, and it sounds like he did quite a few things right here, but he had something happen at the end of the date that was a little unexpected. And so he's unsure of what to do. And he says, oh, he says I, I run into a situation I'm not sure I'm reading correctly. I met an attractive woman on Match.com. We emailed a few times, and then I asked her for her phone number. I called her up two days later and arranged a date, a date for a week later, which was dinner and a haunted hayride and a walk through a haunted forest. Then I got off the phone. Next day, she starts calling me and texting, and, and we end up having a very nice conversation. She says, it lasted way too long, but since she kept calling me, I went with it. She continues texting me daily about how she thinks I am handsome and that she is hoping that we work out. My response to this was just to say thank you and you have good taste. Good good job, good comeback. Just he said just real ego stroking stuff. During the conversation, she kept telling me how funny I was and she seemed to enjoy the playful banter as well. She's basically communicating to I really like you and I'm hoping this works out between us. Now and she said that also but when women really like you and they have a high level of interest, they help you. They help you become successful at seducing them. He says, okay, date night comes and I arrive at her apartment and she is indeed an attractive woman. So she gives me a hug right off the bat. By the way, she also had a cold and had to arrange a sitter for her daughter. The sitter she was using was 15, so she had to drive 20 miles one way to get the sitter. And I open her car door and she gets in. I, I tell her, you look nice tonight. And she says, thanks. And that was the only compliment I gave her for the night. As I'm driving, we indeed have a great conversation. I am playfully teasing her and bantering with her. And she's laughing so loud she starts to snort. Obviously, you're doing a good job so far. He says, I open her car door and let her out. And we walk to the restaurant. And I, and I also open the door for her there. So she's sitting in the car waiting for you to walk around and be a gentleman. It's chivalry. It's I mean, I love that shit. You know, it's very old fashioned and it's cool. And plus the fact that she sits there and waits for you to open the door. It's like obviously most I've never met a woman yet that says she doesn't like it when a guy opens the car door and is a gentleman. Now it doesn't mean you're a fucking doormat and you let the girl walk all over you. It's just that there's certain things a guy should do to be chivalrous. And I've always found my girlfriends and women I've dated over the years like these things. He says, we had a nice dinner and she asked some personal questions, but I did have to keep the conversation going somewhat. So in other words, there were some dead spots in the conversation where you just couldn't think of anything to say. And yeah, that is kind of a red flag because it means that there's either really not much of a connection or maybe you're just kind of bored with her. Or maybe you had said something and caused her to start to lose interest. He says, so we finish dinner and begin the 15-minute drive to where we're going. And I once again open the door and we get out. She takes her arm and puts it in mine and I'm thinking, well, this is a good thing. During the rest of the date and on the drive home, she is touching me all the time. When a girl's touching you that much and giving you that many signals, I, that's usually when I would say, you know, especially like when she, you know, she grabs your arm you just, and you look her in the eyes, you say, I think you just need to get it over with and kiss me. And go for it because she's touching you. And when a woman touching you like that, it means touching is appropriate. And as a man, you want to take a, a step further if you can. It doesn't mean you have to wait till the end of the night. It's just that if you're not getting any signals or she, there are not very many of them throughout the date, when this girl's giving you all kinds of signals that she's into you, then you go ahead and, and make your move. He says her eyes seem to be dancing during the drive home as she's talking she's playing with her hair more signs that she's still interested in feeling attraction for you. He says, however, I noticed a couple of things. Number one is she paid me no compliments when the week before it was 10 a day, a minimum. And two, even though she asked personal questions, there were only three and they were weak questions at best, i.e. where do your parents live, how old is your son, etc. So I'm thinking in my mind that although she appears to have high interest, I do not really know. So I decide before I drop her off that I'm going to test her interest and go for the kiss. So I do, and guess what? She backs up telling me she does not want her neighbors to see her. This tells me that she cares about what other people think about her. And when a girl says that, it's like, oh, who cares about what your, your neighbors think of us? Just, and then fucking say something like that and see, see how she was like, well, it doesn't fucking bother me. It's like, I think you need to bring those beautiful lips over here and kiss me now. And if she still backs up, then you're like, hey, well, I had a good time. I'll see you later. 
And I wouldn't have bothered calling her because that tells me she cares about what other people think or she's structured and following some kind of rule book of hers. Or you said something and turned her off, but it's like on the drive home, she's playing with her hair and all those things. So that communicates interest. But, you know, maybe she's really insecure. Or maybe she's got somebody she used to, you never know. Maybe she dated the guy across the street or something like that and she's worried about him staring at her or there's a, a family member or somebody that knows her that's always in her business or maybe there's a guy that lives next door and she's going out with him a couple of times i mean you just never really know what's going on but this girl's giving you all the signals that she's into you and then she won't kiss you he says i'm not gonna make a scene so i excuse myself and i say i, I understand that she gives me a hug instead and i say thanks for the fun time now it gets even wackier she texts me while i'm driving home which is 45 miles away telling me she wished she had kissed me and did not want me to leave so I text her back and I say, I do not want your neighbors scoring my performance. They might start wanting lessons from me or free samplers or something. That's a fucking great comeback, dude. Good job. She texts me a couple of more times about hoping that she is not pushing me away and that she had a great time and so forth and so on. At this point, I'm rolling my eyeballs and not really buying into all this. Next day, she's texting me asking me if I miss her and I'm still interested in her, to which I reply, Baby, I'm missing a lot of things, but I would prefer to look into your beautiful eyes and tell you face-to-face -face what I'm missing. When she's texting you, you should be arranging the next date to get together. Maybe, you know, if you're 45 minutes away, maybe you have her come to where you live. It's just say, well, I, I drove to your place. You know, why don't you come meet me out at such and such place and have some drinks or whatever. And Or you just invite her over. Just say, why don't you come pick me up this time? You know, obviously it shows that she likes you, but the fact that she didn't kiss you, it's like make her work for it a little bit, you know. Have her come see you this time. She liked the answer, but later in the day, she kept asking, what am I going to do with you? To which I say, well, if you come to my house, I think you could come up with something. Now, all this conversation contact is incoming. And the next day, she invites me to a Halloween party that is in two weeks. Based upon what you read, is she a professional dater with no real interest or is she hiding her interest level? I think she's a professional dater and not worthy of a second date. What is your take? Well, my take is she's showing you everything all the signs that she's into you she's calling you she's texting you she's blowing up your phone but she didn't kiss you at the end of the night and it may be she's really conscious like i said there could be a dude she's dating or been out on a, a date with a couple of times and it didn't work out and she blew him off and now here's some new dude showing up on her doorstep so instead of having to explain herself the next day if the guy's watching her through his windows she avoids an awkward situation so you don't really know but like i said i if i were you i would have her I would make, because she's blowing up your phone and you already have plans to do something in two weeks. But when she texts you, just say, hey, w when are you free this week so we can get together and, and have dinner? And this time you can come to my place. And, like grab a bottle of wine and come over to my place and we'll make dinner together. When are you free? Ask her, let her tell you. And then make definite plans and give her your address and everything and just say, hey, be here Tuesday at 8 or Wednesday at 8 or Thursday at 8, at 8 whatever it happens to be. Make definite plans and say, great, I look forward to seeing you then. And obviously, she'll probably continue to text you. But when a woman is texting you this much, you should be using those opportunities to arrange new dates, not sit on your hands and wait. But like I said, if she comes over to your house and then, I mean, she's got no excuse when, you, you know, because she, she, she'll probably be touching your arm, playing with her hair. And at some point while you're making dinner, you just say to her, I think you need to fucking get it over with and come over here and kiss me. And say it just with the same shitty grin that I just said now because I've, I've said – I've used that line a lot of times over the past 10 or 12 years and it always gets a smile. Use a girl, grab a napkin and wipe her lipstick off and come right over and plant one on you. So if you have a question that you want to ask me, go to my website. Click the Contact Me tab, which will be on the left-hand side of your screen, and send me one to two paragraphs max, and just give me several days to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website. Click the Products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want a digital version of my Kindle ebook, go to my website, and on underneath the email sign-up box is a box that has a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device, on the right-hand side, there's a button you can click to download a free e-reader app for your smartphone, tablet device, or your computer. It only takes a matter of seconds to download and install the app and complete the purchase of my book. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these video newsletters and the articles on my website and my e-book, you can show your appreciation by going to my website and on the Wibia toolbar, which is at the bottom of your screen on any page. 
Click the PayPal Donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.